don't go so literal with your ads. <laughs> we need to get way more creative as to how we make those connections because the brain has billions upon billions of connections in there. Okay, so welcome to the Drag and Drop by Creative P. I'm Robert Katai, and today with me is the one and only Sarah Levinger with an <laughs> awesome Twitter thread. And she's saying something like that. Creative strategy is the long game. So let's discuss about the eight brands that are crushing the ad creative game. And you are starting with Magic Spoon. Everybody is talking about the Magic Spoon. And you said that yeah. you love their hook about the bowl-free cereal. Tell me why. Uh, Magic Spoon is one of my favorite brands, not just because they're visually very interesting. It's really, they've kind of thrown it back to the 90s. They bring a lot of these like gradients in when they do design which is very kind of 90s style, but they also have like a total rainbow color scheme going on, which is really hard to nail. So like Magic Spoon just hits it with their visual design. But when it comes to hooks, it's really interesting when people try and generate them because hooks are not just for video. You can also have them for statics. And that's, we usually just term that as copywriting, but it's 100% a hook. You have to have something that draws people in message wise. So for these guys, bowl free, like, Anytime you use like bowl free cereal or like receptacle free something, it just like pulls a, a very drastic image in your mind of like, how would you have bowl free cereal? That doesn't even make any sense. Cereal has to go in a bowl. <laughs> if, if you can kind of surprise the brain a little bit, it helps so much to get people to get attached to that image and get excited about the ad. So, I mean, they did great. This one was one of my favorites because I was like, you just, you nailed it psychology wise is the kind of it. night that you're somehow envy why i didn't made it <laughs> yes i do that all the time every time i see a good ad i'm like oh that's such a great idea i wish that was my idea uh, yes. yeah they, uh, they did such a great job here love this one the next one was fabletics and you said something very interesting the monochrome ad that explain a lot and image and copy they are saying the same thing and and this is somehow in contrast what everybody's saying that, hey, your image should be compelling with your ad copy. Your ad copy should be mm -hmm. something that is compelling with your image. But Fable Ticks, they are somehow saying the same stuff in very different angles. So why Fable Ticks? Yeah, yeah. This is something I've, I'm sure if you've heard me talk before at all on Twitter or anywhere else, you've heard me say this a lot. Images get processed about 60,000 times faster than text in the brain. So it's really fast. The very first thing anybody sees while they're scrolling through their feed is the image first. So because of that, our brains are trying to recognize really just common things that we already know within the image to decide whether this ad or this, you know, this picture is something we should focus on. So for Fabletics, they did a great job because this entire ad was built around the message of like, this is clothing that's made for everywhere. You can wear it anywhere you go and not just for working out or going to yoga, those type of things. They're trying to make it seem like you can wear this to coffee and still be comfortable. You can go to a work event and still look great. Like you, this is like every day, all day, everywhere clothing. And so they chose this image of somebody in their like really nice black pair of, you know, leggings out. It looks like at a coffee shop or at a restaurant or something. And then the copy supports it by saying, like made for everywhere. So they just, they did a really great job. And this is one of the few ads I've seen that was monochrome. There's so much color being used by everybody. Everybody wants to put like massive amounts of colors in their ads. So this one was such like a breath of fresh air because it's very like brown, black, and white. And that's it. I've, oh, this one was just fun to look at. I really liked it a lot. And that's very interesting because it's somehow different by the, the magic spoon because they yeah. use the neon colors and the very uh and all these colors and now Fabletics is coming with hey we are just using three colors and we can yeah. just take this image and we can just put it in other 10, 10 backgrounds and it will work and that's very yeah. nice because of the ai that is now working like make that image that can maybe go in 10 different uh, backgrounds. So yeah, now I understand why you choose this, uh, this ad. And the next one is very interesting on using the UGC statics like farmer docs. And we had an inter we had a webinar with Jonathan Bland about the zero click ads. And he said that, uh, unfortunately brands are not using stats 
on their ads so people can understand the, uh, the, 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 the context of the ad. And when I saw that ad on, on your Twitter thread, I was like, that's a great example why people should use statics. Yeah, 100%. I find that statics are often underutilized, mostly because people say they, quote, don't work, right? And I, I constantly have to come back and say they don't work probably because you're not building them correctly, <laughs> not just because, like, statics don't work for us. Now, that's that, that comes with, like, a little bit of a caveat, just sometimes some ad accounts really love video, so I understand that, like, some people are going to come back and say, Sarah, it really doesn't work for us. My goal, though, is to always have a very holistic ad account. So anytime I'm going in and doing audits, I want to check and make sure how many statics do you have? How many GIFs do you have? What kind of UGC is in there? How many pro videos do you have in there? What's like the kind of media mix that you have going on? And the reason for that is if I see a crap ton of UGC video and no UGC statics, I'm like, you are missing out on a very big opportunity to make some very quick wins without having to do any more work. So usually I like to take the UGC videos that we already have, watch them as many times as I can and pull out statics as we go. So I'll just take screenshots of something that's like, this would be so good for a static ad. And then I just dump them in folders. I have like hundreds of folders of like random screenshots of things, but they work incredibly well because they look way more organic than any sort of like pro shot video or pro shot static at all. So yeah, if you have video, please go through and take screenshots. It's one of the easiest ways to just generate massive amounts of creative at scale. Mm. The next one was a new, new tweet about the social press. <laughs> Explain. <Yeah. that. laughs> <laughs> this one I found really interesting because, like, I I honestly have never heard of like Meow Meow Tweet. This meow, a meow. very interesting brand. I didn't really quite know what it was, but when I looked at it, I was like, this is like a really cool ad because they, they were able to kind of take their product and take something that pertained to what their message was and pull them together. So they have their product, which is deodorant. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about the fact that like your armpits can help save the pla like the mm -hmm. planet. Um, their copy is your armpits can reduce plastic too. And they have all of these products stacked in front of like this giant mound of mushrooms, which I found really interesting because instead of doing a very literal translation of that message, which would be the deodorant stacked in front of a pile of trash, <laughs> they put the deodorant stacked in front of mushrooms, which is very natural, very something that, you know, it grows a lot. It's very fast. Like people understand mushroom equals really wild, very natural, very woodsy. So they, they just nailed this one. And I find that's something that a lot of people do. They get too literal. Don't go so literal with your ads. <laughs> we need to get way more creative as to how we make those connections because the brain has billions upon billions of connections in there. And you can make a very powerful message very subtly, which they did very well here. Mm. The next one is with from the da Daily Harvest. And you mm -hmm. said that they create a strong urgency. And every time when I'm reading on how to create a strong urgency and how to use this, let's say, psychological behavior, it's it's never like showing an, an example. I just create an urgency, create something that is very urgent. <laughs> I now and stuff yeah. like that. But no, they are doing <laughs> something different. Tell me why yeah. you, you choose this example. Yeah. So this one, I really, I, I think this one is probably one of the best examples of urgency that I could have found, mostly because they put a time limit on it. And this is, I, I think, something we constantly forget to do. We always just say that this is going to sell out soon or like it's going to be gone. Get it now. Right. But we never tell people how long that is. So to most people, when they see a sale and it says something like, you know, get yours now before it's gone. There's, there's no time limit on that. I don't know how long before it's gone is. Is that a week? Is that six months? Is that three years? How long is this stock going to last? In my mind, before it's gone means, eh, it'll probably be there next week. <laughs> For these guys, though, they put copy on here that literally says, so good, they sold out in a week. So they gave me a time frame. Mm. Now my brain goes, holy crap, <laughs> if these sold out in a week, that's seven days. Like, that means the next time they have a sale, I only have seven days to get the product. 
Mm. You have to put some sort of time on it. Give me some reference so that I can understand how quickly they sell out. So mm. that way I understand how many days I have to purchase. Like really, really quick. Very, very important when you're doing urgency. Mm. Kenko, you said that it's a scroll stopping ad. It's a scroll stopping ad. And yeah. I know that everybody's now talking about create the scroll stopper ads and how to create those thumbnail <laughs> stopping ads and everything. Now, tell me why, Kenko, it's a great example. This one is good because it's a pro shot image. So it's very professional photography. It looks like candy, which I think is very visceral for people. If you have a product that's colorful, try and make it look like candy because the more sweet you can make it for people, the more they'll make that brain connection of like, this is something I actually crave and want. But for these guys, they did one specific thing that just changed it all for me. And they, that was very big, bold text in the lower left-hand corner that says 66 days. That one piece of text does way more than just this candy looking image. And here's the reason why. Anytime you can give reference to a day limit, which we just talked about, right? You have to you have to understand that the brain is really interested in numbers and understanding why those numbers exist. It's a very, very like natural thing for humans to do. So if you put 66 days on anything, someone's gonna come in and say, What does that mean? What are they referencing? Why 66 days? Is that habits? Is that like is that how long their product lasts? Is that how long, like, what does that mean 66 days? So they'll stop just to try and understand what the day reference, what's it, what it's like actually trying to reference here. So they did a great job just creating curiosity. It's interesting because they, choose, they didn't choose like seven days or 10 days, yeah. or 30 days, they choose <laughs> like 66 days. Like, that yeah, was, that was... it's very specific. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> The next one was so text only oriented, like uh, mm -hmm. no extra fluff needed, simplicity, air ink. It's somehow I say, I can I can see in my Facebook feed when, it, when a person is like writing something and I know that they are writing on their phone because they are choosing that specific background from yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yeah, this one is fun because it's very rarely used and I, I wish people would use it more, especially if you're in SaaS or tech. This works extremely well for you guys because it's very difficult to demonstrate a SaaS or a tech product without giving full context of like inside the actual platform itself. So this particular image is for Air Inc. I love these guys. They're amazing competitors to Google Drive. Um, yeah, I really, really like their products. So they just have this like kind of blue background with the logo in the upper left and one like big bulk paragraph that says Google Drive and Dropbox aren't built for marketing creative management, use air. And that's it. So they, they're they really kind of targeting in on the biggest problem that their customers have, which is the fact that like Google Drive just isn't doing what they need it to do. And they didn't have to say anything else, you know? Mm. They didn't have to go much deeper than that. They just referenced one big, big problem that they know their customers have. So smart, really mm. easy. And the last one, uh, you're like... <laughs> Great use of color, design, imagery, hook, copy, everything. And I was like looking at this ad from uh, Doe Lashes and, and it was like, wow, it's, it's somehow like, it's the kind of ad that I don't want to make it, but I know <laughs> that it will work. Yeah, yeah. These type of ads have been around for decades on decades on decades. This style is what I like to call magazine style ad. Right. So it looks like it could probably be transferred to a magazine and work just as well because it's very branded. It's got a really like, I don't know, beautiful model who's like doing a very interesting position, very big, bold text, you know, lots of social proof, those different things. The reason I liked this one the best was because one, the model and copy pair like comparison between each other is was very well done. She's very beautiful and you can see how long her lashes are. And then the copy that supported it was the magnetic lash that stays on all day. This particular piece of copy is very integral to how their customers are going to see this ad. Because if you've ever worn fake lashes, those things fall off like every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if you put a crap ton of glue on it, like there's some piece of it that's just going to fall off. So just really well done. And and this ad in particular, I know did really, really well because I actually did some research to see how this one performed and it was very, very top performer for these guys. 
So yeah, the, anytime that you can match good images, good color, and good text, you're going to have a winner. Like it's just, mm. you got to get more creative and, and get deeper into how the psychology works of how people actually see ads. Sarah, if we won't talk about the last one, which one, the other one are your favorites and why? My gosh, favorites from the top ones. Um, honestly, I, I think I'd have to say this Meow Meow tweet one. <laughs> Which is like the funniest brand. I'm like, I don't understand how you chose that name. Meow Meow Tweet. But where are you working? Just... I, I'm the brand manager at Meow Meow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I want to know, like, how did you come up with that name? I, I love this ad. Like, it just, it hits so psychologically well because they took two things that you would never see together, deodorant and mushrooms, <laughs> and stuck them together. And it just works so incredibly well. The rest of them are, like I said, are just great ads. That's why they're in this top eight. But like that one in particular, just psychologically was really well done. Really well done. <laughs> Sarah, thank you very much. That was awesome. You made my day. Like what you are <laughs> writing on your tweet, it's effectively what you are right now and how you explain it. And I believe that this is the entire context. People need to understand how to create great ads that can just make a topic for a podcast, for an example. <laughs> exactly. The more you know, the better ads you're going to generate. So, yeah. yeah, it's important to study. These are fun to look at, too. So hopefully this helps. <laughs> Sarah, thank you very much. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye.